こんばんはお客様が入りましたよ茨姫Yo ho, Spy Family is so hype, man. Episode 2 is straight heat, bruh. Back to back bangers from this series. And before anyone thinks it's being overhyped, don't be that guy, pal. You're not that guy. Like, you can't tell me this story is a compelling as hell. These characters take a basic story plot line, like, investigate this bad guy we know nothing about yet, and still make us care about the mission because all these characters are terrific. And while episode 1 was the dedicated introduction to Twilight and Anya, the entirety of episode 2 was the introduction to this badass, the Thorn Princess. And just like Twilight and Anya, she's living a double life, but not as a doctor slash spy or an orphan slash psychic. Nah, 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 nah. She works for the city hall by day and is an assassin by night. Thing is, these two sides of her aren't entirely separated despite her best efforts to keep her assassin life on the low. We meet the Thorn Princess at the city hall, and it's clear that she doesn't fit in with the other women who work there. The conversation starts by them talking about a thief who came through gathering information on all the women and how the chief there is a creep. All the time, these chicken heads out here sneak dissing Princess, but they did help us with the world building in this scene though. While dissing Princess, talking about she's too old to be single, they bring up that she might be seen by others as a spy, giving her single status. They further say that people have been getting reported for being spies all over for the smallest things. So I'm here like, damn, spies really are a central part of this world. But anyways, they end off the conversation by inviting Princess to a party over the weekend and tell her to bring her boyfriend, knowing damn well she don't have one, and then they walk off Kiki. Later that night though, she gets a call from little bro who tells her he might be getting a promoted at his job, but he won't take it cause he'll be too busy to check up on her, which he wouldn't be an issue if she had a man. And Brixis is like, damn, why everyone bringing that up that I'm single? So she's like, nah bro, I got a man, and we going to a party over the weekend. Whole time little bro's like, oh bet, my homie's gonna be at that function. So I'll have him scope out old boy and see if he's straight or not. Now Princess is in panic mode cause she's like, damn, he about to catch me lying out the ass. So now she gotta find a man before the party. After the conversation with little bro, she immediately gets another phone call and it's the dude called the shopkeeper who is in need of the Thorn Princess's services. Now, when I tell you how hyped this small moment made me, like, we're introduced to Yor as being a socially awkward yet kind and earnest person, but when she flips the switch into assassin mode, edge of my seat, dude. And in the next scene, we get to watch the Thorn Princess go to work. It's said that she was trained as an assassin from a very young age and she's been working for the shopkeeper ever since. After completing her mission, she notices that she ripped up part of her dress, which is the only nice dress she owns and the one that she was going to wear to the party. Alright, so now back with Twilight, Anya, and Frankly, these guys have me cracking up, bruh. Why they got Usopp, Frankie, or whatever dressed up as Bon Clay, bro? <laughs> They realize though he ain't gonna pass for Anya's mother, so they gotta find an actual woman to do the job. So in walks Frankie with a stack of files on single women in the area that he got from the city hall. Hmm. Anyways, they get to talking and Twilight says that he wants to find someone low key who won't be a liability to the mission. Frankie points out that Anya herself is a liability to the mission cause she still looks like an orphan and not a rich kid. Twilight's like, ah, oh, yeah, 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 you right. Let's go get some new clothes and thus set it up to the stage that we've been waiting for. <laughs> I swear man, it's these little hype moments that do it for me. Like it's not like a lot of action or anything like that, but it's just the subtleties and storytelling by revealing more about our main characters. See what I'm talking about is, while they're out shopping for upgraded clothes for Anya, Twilight is scoping out the place and giving us his inner monologue showing just how thorough he is. He notices a wedding ring on the seamstress which is why she wasn't in the files, but the hostess was in the files so he has all the dirt on her. But as he does this, Storm Princess just sneaks up to the front desk from behind him and he was shocked because he didn't even notice her at first. Bruh, this episode just keeps showing us how badass she is, bro. Which is further solidified when Twilight is recalling her from the files he read, she notices that he's been watching hers. And he's like, damn, how she see me seeing her as she sees me? And they get to chopping it up. Whole time, Anya comes back and immediately picks up on her that she's an assassin and needs a boyfriend for the party. Seeing as Twilight is a spy needing a wife, she plays the ultimate wingman and gets these two together. Bet. So after they make an arrangement, Twilight and Anya head out to get groceries for her and the babysitter while Twilight is at the party with the Thorn Princess. Here Twilight receives word that his other mission is going to go down on Saturday, just before the party. Can I just point out how it's kind of cool that how after receiving the info the person meowed for a C cipher or a cat cipher and this time he said ribbit for a toad cipher? Nah, a frog cipher. These spies and their code within the code bruh. Fast forward to Saturday and Princess is waiting at the rendezvous point for Twilight while Twilight is out with Frankie. 
looking to take down a smuggling ring. <laughs> Bro, we can't forget that Twilight is a badass too. Even though Thorn Princess is the star of this episode, Bro takes out 38 dudes with the quickness. Back with the princess though, she realizes that Twilight isn't coming, so she heads off to the party alone. And immediately these hoes out here sneak this in again, talking about why she even come? We knew she didn't have a man, etc. So little bro's friend walks up to her and is like, It's a shame your man's couldn't make it. And the prince is like, Yeah, but could you tell my brother that a nice man came with me anyway? Bro, tell me why this trick walks up and is like, nah 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 nah, nah you're we not gonna do all that. We making sure that your brother know you came alone. <laughs> it's another hype moment for me cause remember how I, earlier I said that the Thorn Princess and Yor weren't completely separate, right? She starts thinking to herself, bitch, what would you gain by telling my brother I came alone? You know what? This might not even be a problem if I just smoke everyone in here. Like, bruh, the Thorn Princess is a certified G, man. She literally thinks an assassin while being Yor. And in assassin mode, she's still polite and earnest, so far my favorite character, hands down. Anyway, she sees that these haters don't mess with her and so she's about to dip but in walks Twilight straight from the mission and these punks can't believe she has a man. So Camila, the biggest hater, tries to embarrass her by telling Twilight that she's out here massaging niggas but then we get a small look into Twilight's character saying sacrificing yourself for others is something that you should be proud of and then they drop the mic on her bitch ass. While heading out though, the dudes from the smuggling ring crash into Twilight and Princess and start hunting them down. Princess realizes that Twilight is the only one that she can rely on to keep her other life on the low and suggests to him that they should get married for reals. Twilight agrees and yet another badass scene occurs, this time with Twilight proposing to the princess. Man, there is so much going on from just these two episodes, we gotta get backstories from all our main characters while also doing this current mission to prevent a war. Simultaneously, we are also anxiously kept wondering if they will ever find out about each other's second lives. I'm also wondering if we're gonna get a Mr. and Mrs. Smith moment with Twilight and the Thorn Princess, or if the people from the lab will try and come and get Anya back or something. Man, there's so many questions and things to learn about these characters and this story that it's keeping me hyped for what's to come next. How are you guys feeling about it though so far? Let's keep talking about it down in the comment section below. And like before, no manga spoilers please. I'll see you guys next week for my thoughts on episode 3. Peace!